Shinra, I think Sony Corporation is a sleeping giant waiting to wake up. Right now everyone is focused on the Unity IPO, the Unreal Engine versus Apple, Nvidia going parabolic with the new hardware and so on. But I have almost not heard anyone talking about Sony. Sony. It's not so common to be eyeing an exciting, innovating tech company with a chart on TradingView going back to 1970, and that has been trading since the 1950s. Unfortunately, I am 45 years late to buying the dip here in 1974, and then we got a second chance below $10 here in December 2012 missed that one too, but I still think Sony is interesting here, and I'll tell you why I think so. First, I do have a personal history with Sony. As many of you know, I worked for Ericsson for many years. I remember the first time I met the senior Japanese executive. She was a marketing director for Docomo, a mobile operator, and they had a system called iMode, which was like mobile internet way ahead of us in the West. We were hosting a conference. Everyone who mattered in telecom was there. She went on stage and said, the key success factor of iMode is the color screen. And there we sat, 500 telecom guys from all over the world with black and white phones in our pockets. I was on the mobile network side, which is what's in the other end of the phone. I didn't work with the phones. Still, I had the fortune to meet the Sony executives and it was a great pleasure. The Sony Ericsson Corporation led to the first color phone for the GSM system, the first camera phone, and this W880, which was actually Walkman branded and my favorite pre-iPhone phone of all time. One time I swam with it for 20 minutes in my swimming pool in Thailand before I realized it was in my pocket. It was a salt water pool and the phone wasn't waterproof. After drying it up in the sun, it still worked. That is quality. But overall, I think the corporation was a mistake. Ericsson is a technology B2B company, not a consumer company. We should have sold the division to Sony instead of setting up a joint venture. But that was a bit above my pay grade as a lowerly engineer in 2001. Anyway, Sony, sorry for the distraction. I hope you got valuable learnings and some good technology out of it. And I mean, who didn't love the Sony Walkman? That was Apple cool before the iPod. This is the real OG. So I do have some emotional attachment here, but that's not why I'm interested to invest now. Consumer products is an extremely difficult business model. I wouldn't put my money on any company with that business model today if they don't also have some other lock-ins like an operating system or something else that makes it hard for the consumer to switch. Let's look here in the latest quarterly report. It's difficult to read, very detailed, very Japanese, but at page 44 we actually find the info. Here are the consumer products. Electronics, products and solutions. 331 billion yen for the last quarter. Then look here. Game and network services. 606 billion yen, with a massive increase year on year. Imaging and sensing solutions. 206 billion. Sony Music and Sony Pictures. That's 352 billion together. Sony is no longer an electronics company. And moving on to profitability, look how challenging the electronics segment is. Of course made even harder this year by Covid, but still. Games, music, pictures, imaging, financial services. Listening to my oldest son, soon 12 years old, Sony PlayStation is the thing. The brand value here is huge. And it looks like the PS5 is on track despite the Covid hurdle. And something else interesting happened now in July. Sony bought a small 1.4% stake in Epic Games, just weeks before Epic launched this fight with Apple and Google. I'm sensing a strategy of disruption here, and that perks up my interest. Then we have the image sensors. These are made by Sony, and according to Pine Leaks, the iPhone 12 sensors will too. It seems like Sony has almost 50% world market share in image sensors. Samsung is number 2 with 18%, for comparison Canon has 5%. And I can guarantee that just as this device has gone from one sensor to at least four, we're going to get image sensors into almost everything. Our cars, I mean this robot dog even has sensors in his ass. Sony clearly has the thought leadership here, with different sensors for different products, AI integration on chip, etc. 
Finally, I am impressed by their product execution. If you watched my camera videos, you saw how they completely obliterated the market leader Canon in this year's product launch for video. That is an indicator of good leadership. And I think they are pretty smart here. If they can get people like myself to begin using Sony, that builds brand value of technology leadership, which can have other spin-offs into the other segments too. And it can be an in-house university for their sensor business. It is because Sony is so well diversified here that they can afford to keep investing R&D into a shrinking camera market. Now let's dive into the chart. I have bought Sony shares here at $78. I have received no payments or benefits from Sony corporations for this video of any kind. This is the American USD chart here. If we start with the trend identification. As expected, if we try the daily chart, we see that historically that has been far too short time frame. We get constant flips between blue and yellow on the Larsen line, meaning that's not a trend. The two week time frame has given a consistent indication of the trend historically. You see, we would have caught much of this rise here in the 90s while avoiding the big slump here in 2002 up to 2013 and got in again on the trend reversal here in 2015-2016. Now, considering Sony has shifted weight towards more fast-paced industries along with the general acceleration of the world, I think the one-week time frame will be optimal going forward and we also see that has been consistently good choice for almost 10 years already, except these little blips here where we would have entered and exited on around the same level. And if you go to the Tokyo traded chart in yen, so we don't have the currency fluctuations disrupting the picture, the one week time frame has actually perfectly reflected the actual trend for 20 years already. Now we have three key support levels here on this chart. The first one below where we are now at roughly 72.60. You see it's the top here from January and also was the key level all the way back to 1999. But a stronger one is here at $60. You see how many times it has reappeared both recently and uh, 20 years ago. Same with the support at $51.66. Look here how many times it has been resistance and then support now in the Covid crash in March. Looking upwards, it's a long time since there was anything ahead of us, so it's pretty clear skies here. But Japanese people have good memory, so this could still come into play. I do expect some resistance at these points here from 2001 and 2000. They are at 85, 116 and 157 dollars. Should we clear that as well? It is definitely clear skies and price discovery after that. Now, the problem here is that I'm late to the party. The correct entry was here in this bottom construction. It's actually a textbook clear. We have both an Adam and Eve bottom and an inverse head and shoulders bottom and the Larsen line trend indicator flipping gold in this same construction. All stars aligned in the sky. But I didn't monitor this chart in 2016, so I didn't notice. I must be humble to the fact that I'm talking about entering here at 78 when the correct entry was at $22. That's almost 4x ago. Therefore, the way I will handle this is that I will enter with one part here at $78, which I fully expect will turn on me. If it does, I'll try to get in at $72 and add the same dollar amounts at $60 and at $50 if we get a big sudden dip. I will even consider adding at $42 as well, that is the dip here, if trend remains up. That would give an average entry of $54. Should the trend turn down, I will exit of course, I don't ride take down. On the daily we have a symmetrical triangle forming here, which is signaling uncertainty. If it breaks down, that 72 level is in play. If it breaks up, we might never see those lower levels in this cycle and then I'll just be happy with the entry I got. This investment in Sony is following the strategy I gave in this video. If you haven't seen it, I think you should. It's one of my most fun and most useful videos ever if you have an eye for tech. Now Sony Sweden, please lend me that camera to test on the tech channel. I have three channels here on YouTube. This channel about investments in tech stocks, the tech channel and the Bitcoin channel. Welcome to subscribe to all three. Just search for CTO Larson and please like this video and comment your thoughts about Sony. Sony. Thank you, Tuck. CTO Larson out. Hello. Walking the stereo. Walkman. <laughs>